here is to create a great habitat for your vegetable plants to thrive. So what do vegetable plants want most? They photosynthesize, so they need sunlight or grow lamps if you're growing indoors. And vegetable and herb plants are very specific about how much sunlight they want. Vegetable and herb plants will reward you with lots of growth when they get 68 hours of sunlight. When you go to plant stores, you'll see tags that say things like low light, medium light, and high light. Or you might see tags that say partial shade, partial sun, or full sun. Vegetables like this tomato tag here typically say full sun. Vegetables thrive with a minimum of six hours of sunlight. That's what full sun means. Medium light is four to six hours, and some vegetables can grow under medium light. But remember, I showed you earlier that my harvest was cut significantly when I tried to grow in four hours of sunlight. If you want easy wins and lots of food, find at least six hours of sunlight. I would love for you to feel really successful. And then there's low light, two to four hours of sunlight. This is where vegetables pretty much wither and die. They may sprout really well, but they won't grow into mature plants. All right, so when you look at your space, you may notice it seems sunny or it seems shady, but how do you easily quantify exactly how many hours of sunlight it receives? If you know without a doubt that you get 68 hours of sunlight, you can skip forward in this video now. For the rest of us, how do we calculate if we're receiving enough sun or not? Another way to say six to eight hours of sunlight is that we're looking for areas with less than 16 hours of shade. So what we're actually doing when we measure the hours of sunlight is measuring shadows instead. Shadows are consistently on the move from sun up to sundown and throughout the season. You could track a whole lot of data to find out exactly how many hours of sun each part of your growing space gets every day of the growing season, but that would be a colossal waste of time and effort. So as part of my courses, I teach how to collect useful data to make informed decisions to help you grow more food. Otherwise, you're collecting a whole bunch of useless data and you're just wasting your time and I don't want that for anyone. So I use a super simple process to track shadows. I walk outside and I simply observe the shadows. But there are just a few tricks to knowing when to look, how to record that data, and how to interpret that data. And even if you think you know how much sun your growing space gets, this exercise is quick and it may surprise you. So let's run through an example. The camera on our phone makes this process really easy. On a sunny day, simply set your alarm to go off every hour. When the alarm goes off, go outside, take a photo of the garden spot that you want to test. And here's my current garden boxes at 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. in the winter. What do you notice? Remember I mentioned that in the winter it takes me twice as much space to grow my greens as in the summer? This is the big reason why. Temperatures are pretty ideal here in the winter, but with only four hours of sunlight, everything is growing about half as fast. And as long as you're home on a sunny day, this doesn't take you but a couple minutes to do this exercise. Take the photos and then simply scroll through them and count up the hours of sunlight. So here's a couple tips. If you look outside when the alarm goes off and there's no sun, no need to take a photo. If you haven't planted a garden yet, you can mark the area you want to plant and watch how the shadows fall across that area. And if part of the area is in sun in one photo and then completely in sun in the next photo, you might count that as a half hour instead of a full hour. And if you have a really large property and want to map the shadows across your whole yard, you can draw everything out and then color in the shadows you see with colored pencils each hour or every couple of hours. And as you map your site, don't worry if you think you can't draw. Your drawing, your drawing only has to make sense to you. And some of my students use gridded paper, like in my template below, to get their measurements as accurate as possible. Other students use an aerial image and draw over the top of it. Whatever makes sense to you to get the data you need to locate your garden beds. And you'll learn so much about your site if you make this exercise a priority to discover the sun pattern on your site. Okay, so that exercise is simple and fun, but there's one important trick. When do you do this? Spaceship Earth is orbiting around the sun on an angle, so you can find the number of hours of sunlight is going to change throughout the season and throughout the years as trees and bushes grow around you. Ideally, you would do this four times a year, March 21st, June 21st, September 21st, and December 21st. Those are the solstices and equinoxes marking the four seasons. Now, why do I recommend tracking shadows on all four of these days? Well, you might discover the place you wanted to grow vegetables doesn't get enough sun, or that you have less growing space than you realized in one of those seasons. Or you may also discover more growing space you never expected. Yes, there may be a prime growing space right under your nose that you might not recognize until you do this exercise. So no matter how much experience you have, 
Take the data and find out. Here's an example of finding unexpected growing space. Take a look here at the difference in the 12 noon shadows on the summer and winter solstices. Underneath this big tree in June is a big shadow. The sun is right over your head. Now, look at December 21st, the winter solstice. The green is basically showing the area of the tree canopy overhead, but it's not necessarily where the shadow falls in the winter and there's no leaves. The tree is so tall that that shadow falls all the way over on the neighbor's yard. And what you'll notice is that the area right under the tree is a prime area for growing vegetables because it gets lots of sunlight. What you'll also notice is that the six foot fence at the south of the site puts out a large shadow because the sun is so low in the sky, making a big part of the site unusable as a growing space. So in the early spring, I grow a lot of lettuces under that tree, but as the solstice approaches, the area under that tree becomes a little less usable. As fall and winter approach, maybe I want to grow some winter greens in a mini greenhouse or cold frame. I'm not going to locate my greenhouse anywhere near that fence, right? Because it's in shadow all day long. I'm, not, I'm going to grow under that tree. And for beginners, I would recommend you focus on the basics your first season and then start to think about projects like cold frames and greenhouses at the end of your season to start extending your season. Remember, you want a minimum of six hours of sunlight if you want your garden to be easy. And no, you cannot get too much sun. Just check out these giant vegetables in Alaska where they have 19 hours sunny days sometimes. Holy cabbage, right?